franchise record broken. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are going to kick off this big Friday episode the way we kick off all of our episodes, and that is with a special shout out to our Locked On Predheads. Those are our everyday listeners who tune in to talk Nashville Predators hockey with us each and every day. We thank you guys so much for your support. We love that we get to spend a little bit of your day with you. I'm Ann Kimmel. I am a writer at Penalty Box Radio. And my friends, it is a big Friday for the Nashville Predators fans. Last night, the Nashville Predators broke a big franchise record in their three to nothing win over the Florida Panthers. On today's show, we're going to talk about what that new record tells us about this Predators team. We will recap the game with our one word, of course, and we're going to wrap up this Friday episode with my Friday feelings on a few NHL awards. Before we get started with all of that, I do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. The Nashville Predators broke the franchise record for consecutive point streak last night with a three to nothing win over the Florida Panthers on the road. There was a whole lot to like about this game, and there's a lot that we need to take a minute to acknowledge about this record-breaking game. But as you know, anytime we have a game recap here at Lockdown Predators, we kick the show off with our one word to describe the game. I asked you all for your one word to describe this 3 nothing win over the Florida Panthers. And my friends, you all never disappoint. <laughs> so I want to share just a few of the one words that we got from social media about the Predators win over the Panthers. Gil Martin, who is the host of the Locked On NHL show and Locked On New York Islanders show, said impressive. J.W. Hood, who, by the way, hates my one word, peeper, when I refer to the power play. But J.W. Hood said streaking, and he did have a gift to go with that. And and I think we're just going to leave it at that. At Samuel Marcy said inspiring. And that I think that is such a great one word for what we're seeing from the Predators right now when they play. Uh, Bowtie guy. I love this one word, belonging. This Nashville Predators team is out to show that they belong in some very important conversations and in the postseason right now. This is probably my favorite one word we got last night. Real Tech Matt said Blankenin. And you know I love me a good pun. And you know I love to talk about Kevin Lankinen. And we're going to do that later in the show. My one word Uh, for the game last night was EMTs. Now, my son is a first responder. He's an EMT. And so I've gained a different perspective and and even more respect for the people that perform that job. First of all, you have to know a lot and you have to be able to execute very well in high pressure situations when there is a lot of emotion and a lot of energy going on around you. In the midst of all of that, an EMT has to stay calm. They have to execute what they know. They can't get swept up in the emotion going on in the situation around them. It's about being focused. It's about being knowledgeable. It's about staying in the moment. It's about being unflappable. Now, last night, the Nashville Predators could have gotten caught up in the moment. This was a big game because, of course, you have that you could break a franchise record for consecutive point streak. You know, you have that going on and you're playing a top cup contender. And let's be honest, I don't think anybody in Nashville would have squawked too much if the Predators lost to Florida three to two, two to one. You know, if they had executed well, I think we all could have been like, hey, you know what? Good job, even though they didn't win. But this Predators team That's not who they are. They went into this game, this high pressure game with a lot of energy and a lot of emotion around it. And they stayed focused. 
They executed. They didn't get caught up in the moment. They didn't allow the moment to overtake what they knew. And they played the game with that calm focus of an EMT. In case you did miss last night's game, here is our quick 30-second recap. And then we're going to dive into what we know about this Predators team from this win streak. The Predators did pressure Bobrovsky early, but oh my goodness, he was very good. And it was almost the end of the first period before they could get anything past him. Gus Nyquist cleaned up a loose puck in a net front scrum to make it one nothing after one. Philip Forsberg scored a what power play slash peeper goal at 732 in the second. He tipped in a Tyson Berry shot. That goal was reviewed to make sure it wasn't played with a high stick, but it was ruled a good goal. Kevin Lankinen came up huge in key moments with pressure from the Florida Panthers. And then Philip Forsberg put a puck in off of his skates with just over five minutes left in the game to seal the three nothing win and get Kevin Lankinen the shutout. So what is so special about this record being broken? The record broken was uh, previously the Nashville Predators had a stretch of 15 game consecutive point streak. With last night's win over the Florida Panthers, they broke that record and they are on a 16 game consecutive point streak. So we talked about the previous record on our Wednesday show. That record uh, was set back in 2018 and it was a little bit of a different situation. The Preds went 14-0-1 on that stretch. This is a team that had just come off the Stanley Cup Finals. Their roster was stacked. You had Pecorine playing his Vesna trophy level season, won the Vesna after this. You had Philip Forsberg, Victor Arvidsson, Ryan Johansson playing very well. On defense, you had P.K. Subban, Roman Yossi, Ryan Ellis, Matthias Ekholm. I mean, this was a stacked roster. Your depth pieces were Craig Smith, Kevin Fiala, Kyle Turris, Nick Bonino. They went on that season to win the President's Trophy, and they were expected to make another deep cup run, but that didn't happen. Anyway, breaking this record this time with this Nashville Predators team tells us a couple important things about where the franchise is right now. First thing we learn, this Predators team is legit. And I've hesitated to say that with too much emphasis because, you know, teams can get hot and, and go on little streaks, but you don't set a 16 game point streak by chance, by an easy, fortunate schedule, or by a fluke. There are not 16 games in a row you can put in a schedule that are easily winnable. And they got this record with wins over current Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knights, top teams from the Central Division like Winnipeg and Dallas, uh, a current Stanley Cup favorite last night over the Florida Panthers, and what's almost as important is they've been able to win those tricky trap games in between. The other thing that I think we need to acknowledge as you look at this new record set by this particular team, you have to acknowledge that Nashville is ahead of schedule with where we thought they would be when it comes to this, quote, reset, rebuild, whatever reword you want to use for it. Barry Trotz did a great job kind of setting expectations at the beginning. He talked about this is going to be a season or two of one step forward, two steps back. And we've seen that in little pockets of this season for sure. There has definitely been painful moments of, of steps forward, steps back this season. But when you string together a 16-game point streak, you have to acknowledge that this is a team that is soundly better than what you may have expected. And I think what's been the key is that Barry Trotz has put together such a good mix of veteran presence and Andrew Brunette has done a great job using those veterans, but also developing young players. So the mix of experience and the development of the young players that's maybe moving ahead for some of these guys a little faster than we anticipated I think you look at all of that and you have to come away from this franchise new point streak record saying this team is ahead of schedule. The final thing that we can take away from last night's record breaking win is that this is a Predators team that could actually make a splash in the postseason. Now, I am not saying book Bono and you two to come here for the championship parade down Broadway yet, but this is a team 
that top contenders like Winnipeg, like Vancouver, like Dallas, like Florida, like Boston, those teams may not want any part of this Nashville Predators team. You know, I'm hesitant to say they're going to make this really deep cup run because the playoffs are a different beast. And while you have some great experience with winners like Ryan O'Reilly and Ryan McDonough on the roster, you also have a handful of young players who are playing really well now that have not been in the postseason. And so it'll be interesting to see what the postseason could look like for the Predators in the first round. But here's what we know. They could they could really upset somebody in the first round of this, this playoffs. So this franchise record that the Predators broke last night, there are some things that we know now for sure about this Nashville Predators team. Coming up, we're going to talk about the takeaways from last night's game against the Florida Panthers. And we're also going to look ahead to Saturday's game against the Detroit Red Wings. That is not one that we need to overlook at all. First, want to let you know this episode's brought to you by our friends at Indeed. No matter how great the game last night went, anytime you take the ice, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. You can find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Indeed Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest in 2019. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. The Nashville Predators defeated the Florida Panthers three to nothing on the road last night. And there are a few players and a few takeaways that I feel like we really need to talk about. First thing is let's talk about the performance of Nashville's top line. Last night, Philip Forsberg had two goals, one assist. Gus Nyquist had one goal, one assist, and Ryan O'Reilly had two assists in the game. Nashville has had scoring up and down the lineup, and you know that has been a big part of their success through this consecutive point streak. But here is what's real. When it all comes down in big games, in the postseason, your best players have to be your best players. You know, and again, we've had stretches where the top line has carried the team. We've had stretches where depth scoring has carried the team. You've got to have both. But again, when you're looking at a postseason run, these are the three players that have to be playing their very best hockey if Nashville wants to make a splash in the first round. It was very funny. ESPN talked with Gus Nyquist after the game. And this is kind of one of my favorite things about Gus Nyquist. He is as adept at avoiding a compliment or taking any credit for his performance as he is at playing hockey. Like this is a Swede who cannot take a compliment. He's always deflecting and talking about, well, I'm just playing with really good people. Look, Gus Nyquist set a career high in assists and points so far this season. When he was signed as a 34-year-old veteran, he was coming off of a late-season injury. He had just played only three postseason games for Minnesota before Barry Trotz signed him. Didn't we all have a moment of like, hey, Barry Trotz, you sure about that? You sure about this one? Gus Nyquist is the real deal. He has plenty of great hockey left to play. And yes, does it help that he's playing with Philip Forsberg and Ryan O'Reilly? Sure. 
does it help Philip Forsberg and Ryan O'Reilly that they are playing with Gus Nyquist? Sure does. Gus Nyquist still has the speed that you need to execute Andrew Brunette's style of hockey. He is terrific in those net front scrums. We've seen him do those kind of greasy cleanup, take out the trash goals that you need to win games. He has been excellent for this team. And again, setting career records with the Predators as a 34-year-old, which is not old, but you know hockey years. Philip Forsberg, Forsberg having a fantastic season. He only needs five goals in the remaining 12 games, which sounds like a lot, unless your name is Philip Forsberg. But if he gets five goals in these last 12 games, he will beat his career high on goals and tie Matt Duchesne for goals in a regular season. Might be kind of fun to see him break that record, but that's a big ask. He needs five assists in the remaining regular season to beat his career high and eight points to set a new career high in points. Philip Forsberg is having a fabulous season. Ryan O'Reilly. I know I talked about him on Monday about how maybe he's been a little quiet on the score sheet lately. Remember, I did not give him a minus. I gave him a dash. It was really great to see him get two assists in this game. And look, even when Ryan O'Reilly doesn't make it onto the score sheet, this is somebody who is playing very well at five on five. This is somebody who is on the ice for the power play. He leads the team in power play goals. This is somebody who is on the ice now quite a bit of time for the penalty kill, especially, you know, you've got Jeremy Lazan out. You need somebody like Ryan O'Reilly out there to kill a penalty. Preds did a great job managing uh, the Florida Panthers power play, which is one of the best in the league. Credit goes to Ryan O'Reilly and those other penalty killers for being able to manage that. So you've got your three big players playing big last night. Of course, you know I'm going to talk about Kevin Lincoln. And I could do an entire show, and I think we all know at one point, I am going to do an entire show on Kevin Lincoln. And Kevin Lincoln and got the shutout last night. And you all know what I'm going to say. All of you general managers out there who didn't pick up the phone to call about Kevin Lincoln and at the deadline, just sit there in your wrongness and be wrong because Kevin Lincoln is the real deal. He does not get many starts. You cannot just look at the stat sheet and make an assessment of how Kevin Lincoln is as a goaltender. This is a guy who is always ready. He is one of my favorite people to talk to for a couple of reasons. First of all, he's so great. I'm personally just fascinated by the mental uh, burden of being a goaltender. You know, you're the guy, you know, in baseball, it's the pitcher. In football, it's the quarterback. In basketball, it's the point guard. But those are all people who initiate the big play. When you are a goaltender in hockey, your whole job is to end the big play. And that's a very different mindset that you have to have because you are the last man standing. And Kevin Lincoln has been really great about just the mental work that it takes to, to play this position. But he is also somebody who wastes no time. Kevin Lincoln does not waste a second of ice time, whether that is at practice, whether it is in one of these 14 starts that he has gotten this season. One of my favorite things that I've heard about Kevin Lincoln and came from head coach Andrew Brunette several weeks ago, and he talked about Kevin Lincoln and said one of his favorite things is that he is so competitive. Even when he knows, according to kind of how the schedule is laid out and what is going on with the team, even when Lincoln knows that Soros is going to get the start, he's still a little bit ticked off about it because he is so competitive and he so wants to get out there. You know, he's probably not going to play Saturday because he just played against Florida. Kevin Lincoln is probably going to be a little irritated about that because he wants to get out there and play. He is so hungry to play. This was his third career shutout. It was his first shutout as a Nashville Predator. His last shutout happened back in March of 2021. Lankanen is 10 and four in his 14 starts with the Preds. Again, when you back up Soros, you don't get a lot of ice time. So you've got to be good when you do. Uh, I did a series uh, right before or during the All-Star game where I asked some of the different players five quick questions. And one of the questions was, describe your season in one word. Kevin Lankanen's one word was winning. And I love that. And he has won. He won on the road versus teams like Edmonton, Carolina. He's beat Dallas twice. 
the Florida Panthers last night. He has beat the Vegas Golden Knights. He's beat St. Louis. This is a guy who is not afraid of the big game. He is not afraid of being on the road. He wants to be in net. And the biggest comfort we can take away, I think, when it comes to goaltending from last night's game is that the Nashville Predators can head into a postseason with a killer goaltending tandem, probably second only to Jeremy Swayman and Linus Olmark from Boston. So fantastic game from Kevin Lankinen, who is, he's just a delight and you love to see it. I do want to give a shout out to a player that didn't make it onto the score sheet and this may seem kind of out of left field, but if you've watched the Predators over the last two, three games, this is going to make sense to you. And I think you're going to agree that you're seeing what I'm seeing. And I want to give a shout out to Luke Evangelista. In this 16 game run, he has six goals. He has nine points. Again, no points in last night's game, but I still think he deserves a shout out because you are seeing such a difference in the way that he plays away from the puck and with the puck, but also away from the puck. There were times earlier in the season where it seemed like Evangelista was maybe a little bit hesitant to engage in puck battles or where he was pushed off the puck maybe a little easier than you wanted to see. There were times where he seemed tentative to shoot the puck, where you would see him thinking about it. And instead of maybe taking the shot, he would opt to, now I'm going to pass. Right now, you have Luke Evangelista shooting the puck, making really great choices when it comes to passing and shooting, and he is hunting pucks like his name is Michael McCarron. He was absolutely everywhere on the ice last night, chasing down the puck, chasing after these Florida Panthers players, playing with speed. He would get from one side of the ice to the other side of the ice after a puck. He was playing physical. Look, Luke Evangelista is not a giant beefy player. He's listed as six feet, 183, I think 20 pounds of that has got to be his hair. Um, but he is playing confident. He is playing very physical. He is playing very fast. And you see him trusting himself. You don't see him second guessing himself in the moment. He is feeling the game and he's doing it with consistency. Andrew Brunette talked about, you know, confidence matters. And when players like Novak, when players like Evangelista were struggling, Andrew Brunette would say they just need to find the back of the net. Because once you get that one goal and you get the feel of it, you're going to settle in. And I think we're really seeing that from Evangelista. And I think we're seeing it from Tommy Novak, too. Coming up, we are going to talk about what last night's game has me thinking when it comes to end of the season awards. We're also going to preview Saturday's game against Detroit. That ain't a nothing game, my friends. But first, this episode is brought to you by our great friends at FanDuel. All right. Fess up. Did you all have Oakland over Kentucky? I'm a little bit excited about this because one of my dearest friends is on staff at Oakland. But if you didn't have them, don't worry. You can say goodbye to a busted bracket because at FanDuel, you can bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you are betting on that big upset or you're betting on a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. The Predators are going to look to continue their winning ways this weekend with a Saturday game against Detroit. Puck drop is at 4 p.m. Central Time. Just want to throw that out because it's a little bit different. They also have some tough games coming up next week as well. So be sure to join us on Monday's episode of Locked On Predators, where we'll recap Saturday's game. We'll preview what's coming up the week ahead. And of course, you know, on Mondays, we always do our plus minus. So one final takeaway from me about last night's game really got me thinking about these NHL end of the season awards. And so here's where I'm at. Here are my Friday feelings on end of the season awards after watching that Florida game. The first one doesn't have anything to do with the Nashville Predators, but I do want to say, and I feel like I have to be fair to give a shout out to Sergei Bobrovsky, who is making a case for the Vesna. He is currently second in the um, 
kind of in the betting pools uh, when it comes to who will win the Vesna. He's behind Connor Hellebuck, who is the favorite. And look, it's very hard to bet against Connor Hellebuck. You know, he has a very heavy workload. He's playing with a very good team. He doesn't give up much. He is kind of the guy that keeps the Jets in these very close one goal games that they've had. But man, Sergei Bobrovsky and some of the saves that he had last night were mind blowing. I mean, Nashville could have had far more than three goals in that game, especially in the first period. But Bobrovsky shut some things down and just was huge. I mean, that first period was all due to Sergei Bobrovsky keeping Florida within one goal. So I do feel like I need to acknowledge how good he was last night. And just that's just an extension of how good he has been, especially recently for the Florida Panthers. This is my huge Friday feelings takeaway from last night's game when it comes to the NHL end of the season awards. My friends, Andrew Brunette must be a Jack Adams finalist. And quite frankly, I think he should win it. And I don't feel like that's a hot take anymore. I know everybody is talking about Rick Tockett. Uh, he is the Vancouver coach and he is the favorite. And I get that because Vancouver, I think, has surprised some people. But Vancouver is farther down the road than the Nashville Predators are when it comes to getting back into contention. I think he has had, you know, he's obviously had more time than Andrew Burnett. He jumped in midseason. So he's had more time with this roster and I just feel like when you look at what Andrew Brunette has done with a roster that, quite frankly, is a, I mean, it's a good roster on paper. We knew it was a good roster, fairly good roster to start a reset at the beginning of the season. But what Andrew Brunette has done with this group of players that probably hasn't been built for a postseason run is incredible. And he deserves a Jack Adams nomination. And quite frankly, he deserves to win it. Um, the Penalty Box Radio, we have a radio show once a week on 102.5 The Game. And we kick off each show with what we call a puck drop question. And last uh, Wednesday's puck drop question was, who is the most relentless on the Predators team right now? And my answer was Andrew Brunette. Because Andrew Brunette has been preaching the same message over and over and over again to a team that got it and then struggled. And then with young players who were trying to understand what does it mean in the NHL to play this style of hockey and how do I grow my game into it? Andrew Burnett is the best coach in the NHL right now. And I would be hard pressed to back down from that take. Finally, I think we have to talk about Roman Yossi for Norris. Is he going to win it? Of course he's not going to win it because Roman Yossi can't have nice things. Um, Quinn Hughes, odds on favorite. Kale McCarr is second. Noah Dobson is third. Roman Yossi now is fourth when it comes to uh, kind of where FanDuel expects these guys to fall in the Norris conversation. And I get Quinn Hughes, like he's having a phenomenal season and it's very hard to ignore what he's done. He's been very important for Vancouver. Kale McCarr, obviously one of the best defensemen in the league. It's hard to argue about that. It's hard to be mad about that. He's also playing with a boatload of talent around him on that Colorado Avalanche team. Noah Dobson having a career year for the New York Islanders. I get it. You've got to acknowledge that. But man, right now, Roman Yossi, is playing, I think, better than any defenseman right now in the entire National Hockey League. Um, he is carrying this team, and it has not been easy. Like, Roman Yossi has had to make major adjustments to his game under this system, under Andrew Burnett. He has had his own growing pains, even as a veteran Norris Trophy-winning defenseman. He has had to go through his own growing pains, and to go from – where this team was defensively to start the season and, and what Yossi had to kind of get used to doing differently to where you see him now. This is Norris Trophy level talent, my friend. Watching him last night when he has the puck, my husband and I were just laughing. We're like, look at him go. Roman Yossi looks like a different player when he has the puck. And last night, he's just doing things that are so next level. Um, so look, Yossi for Norris, I'm here for it. He has got to be in the conversation and quite frankly, he needs to be a finalist. 
All of that aside, you know, it, you don't want to look too far ahead to the end of the season awards yet because Nashville is not at the end of the season. They have a game on Saturday against the Detroit Red Wings. And this is one of those games where we talked about the structure of the schedule that could be tricky. You know, this is a team where you might overlook them. You would be wrong to overlook the Red Wings. They did start the month off on a seven-game losing streak, but they also lost to some really good teams. They had a tough stretch there with Florida, Colorado, Vegas, the Islanders. They also lost twice to Arizona and to Buffalo, but both of those teams, Arizona has showed whether they keep it going or not, that they have some potential there. And Buffalo, what has gotten into Buffalo? They did lose last night big time, but Buffalo's got a little thing going on there. Right now, Detroit's on a two-game win streak. Um, they beat, um, uh, they had a nice 6-3 to three win last night over the Islanders. So this is a team that has something to prove. And it's not just they want to prove something. They want to get into the playoffs. They currently have a 43% chance to make it into the wild card two spot. They want this win. They want these two points. And they are going to come into this game extremely hungry. And they've got plenty of talent on their roster where this could be a game that could trip up the Nashville Predators. So what are the keys to Saturday's game against Detroit? Number one, the Predators cannot be overconfident. Yes, you just broke a franchise record, but friends, the season ain't over. You've got to stick with what got you there. The Predators have to play that same style of hockey. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. And get on the ice and execute what you need to do. Number two, this game is going to have to be a total team effort. You're especially going to want to see scoring from that middle six that we didn't necessarily get against the Florida Panthers. You're going to want to see that. You're also going to want that fourth line to do their fourth line thing. You know, you need to get them hunting pucks, getting puck possession um, when they take the ice and kind of setting this team up for success. That fourth line has been so important in these wins. Finally, I want to see Nashville get that first goal of the game. The Predators have scored first in 14 of these 16 games. The only team that has gotten on the board first in these 16 games uh, that was not Nashville was the Minnesota Wild. They, in both of their games against the Predators, scored first. One of those games, the Predators still came back and won. One they lost in overtime. We know John Hines. Um, so you really want to see the Predators get out and get on the board first. I'm not saying panic if Detroit scores first, because I think Nashville has kind of that strength and that fortitude to immediately come back. But let's just go ahead and get the first goal. You want to see players like Jankowski. You want to see uh, Tommy Novak. You want to see Luke Evangelista. You'd like to see Jason Zucker um, get back into the mix, maybe scoring some goals. I am curious about Anthony Bavillier. He's been very quiet in this stretch of hockey since joining the team. Keep an eye on it. Will we see Cody Glass back in the lineup for Bovillier? I don't know that Brunette is going to want to do a ton of tinkering with the lineup, but let's keep an eye on that. We'll see what happens come Saturday. I personally would love to see Glass get back in the lineup. We're going to watch and see what happens this weekend. And you know we're going to be back on Monday to talk about everything. In the meanwhile, you can check out my work at Penalty Box Radio. I just put a piece out yesterday where I talked to some of the Nashville Predators players about being called up from Milwaukee, about that process and what goes into being called up. So check that out at Penalty Box Radio. Of course, you can follow the podcast on all the social media platforms at LO underscore Predators. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever get wherever you get your favorite podcasts, and you can subscribe on YouTube. It will let you know every time we have a new episode out. That is going to do it for this Friday episode of Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. We will be back Monday with an all new episode. Y'all have a great weekend.